Hi, this is just a little aside video from my Nixie Tube display driver uh, videos I've been doing because I thought some people might find this just interesting in its own right. We're going to talk about electrical uh, rules checking in schematic documents, in this case using uh, a powerful tool like Altium Designer and just exactly what is an ERC, how does it differ from a design rule check on a uh, PCB and what advantages it can have. So let's get to it. Just to show you uh, doing an ERC on a schematic like this. Now a lot of people will just skip this if you're just doing it quickly and getting up and running but hey you know you could get if you're doing a, any sort of serious design or even a one-off like you know let's say we had our grid set incorrectly and we had a fine grid and we didn't connect up this trace to here or something like that and you zoomed out and you didn't notice that it wasn't electrically connected for example there could be many other connection faults on a schematic uh, that's why they have snap grids in here so that everything snaps so when you actually then do your net list for this and pass it through to your pcb that information that net list information of what pin connects to what does not get sent through to your pcb file and then you won't route the thing you could easily miss routing that pin and your board won't work because you made a simple error in your schematic and you didn't do an ERC and fix it. So let's go in and actually do an ERC of this thing. Um, you should do it as a matter of course. Now all programs work uh, differently. This is how Altium Designer works. Now there are two ways to invoke an ERC, an electrical rules test. Uh, one is to actually uh, right click on here and go compile document. But as I've shown in a previous video on my second channel, I think there's a bug with this. So we're not going to use that. Anyway, uh, Altium recommend uh, actually compiling the PCB the entire PCB project and that will use the uh, rules which we'll take a look at. So the term compile is just another way to actually run an electrical rules check. You can think of that, you know, it's literally like a software compiler. We've written our code, we've drawn our schematic, now we're compiling and it's going to tell us if we've done something stupid. And the other more powerful way to actually systematically uh, do this as part of your process is to uh, create and use an out job. So I'll just show you that here. Let's go in and do an out job, shall we? So what we have to do here is go into uh, settings, output job files. Now I've created a new out job here. You just go in file, new out job. So I've created an out job. And what we have to do is it's rather convoluted, but there's reasons for this. An out job is just a very systematic way of doing all sorts of things. In this case, generating net lists, uh, simulators, documentation assembly, fabrication outputs, i.e. all your Gerber stuff, doing all your reports like your ERC and your DRCs, which we're going to do here, um, and then all sorts of stuff. And it's really powerful. As a professional uh, PCB designer in the past, I've made extensive use of these out jobs. You know, if you're a professional designer, you want a rigorous process for releasing a new board. And these out jobs just force you to generate all these reports and all these different things, a very, very powerful and flexible tool for, for the professional. Um, probably a little bit annoying just for the one-off, you know, hobbyists making one-off boards or whatever. But anyway, so we can do stuff like, you know, going to fabrication outputs and we can generate our drill drawings, our Gerber files. Oh, there's a, like, update screen bug error. I think that's caused by my screen capture here. Anyway, um, uh, what we want to do is we want to create an ERC in this thing. So we want to go to add new validation output. Now we've got two different types. One's a design, oh that's annoying, a design rules check, a DRC, but you'll notice that it's only available on our PCB document because DRCs, a design rule check is done on PCBs, but if you want to do this, basically the same thing on a schematic, it's called an ERC, an electrical rules check. So you notice, so this is what we want, electrical rules check, and then it we've got one schematic document in our project so we select that and bingo we've got an ERC on our um, thing here. Now we enable this and we can actually send the output of this to a PDF file if we want to generate a report for you know uh, a meeting or so you know or for whatever purpose or we can generate a video but what we'll do is we'll just generate a uh, basically a HTML file here so we'll generate a file and we can just go generate content so what we're going to do is run the electrical rules check using the rules that are already set up which I'll show you in a minute and we can just go generate content so it actually runs an ERC and bingo 
here's our report. And you'll notice that uh, there's not too, there's no major errors, warning Will Robinson, error, error. We've only got some warnings here, hidden net added to VCC and ground. That's nothing. That's to do with the 74HC chip, which has a couple of hidden pins, no problem. Uh, but then these, oh, what do we got here? Look, no driving source, pin U118. And basically every one of those uh, 595 chips and a couple on the uh, module as well. So let's go in and take a look at that, shall we? Right, so it's put all these errors in our messages output here so we can actually go in and have a look at you know what one of these errors is so we can go in there and we can go cross probe and bingo it takes us it zooms us all the way in which is rather rather annoying here but anyway it zooms us and then highlights the particular error so oops <laughs> i see the problem um d out um, yeah, oops, that was a PEBCAC error. When I was creating this symbol, I created pin 18 there, the D out. I've actually set it as an input pin. You see that arrow going input? So what's happened here is it's flagged this as a warning. It says basically there is no driving source. I've got two inputs tied together, but there's no signal driving that line. So it knows that it's electrical rule checking your schematic. So um, yeah, we need to fix that. And I've done that because it, I just placed the same chip. It's populated all that error. And I think we had an error on the module as well. So yeah, probably a couple of these inputs weren't, you know, the pins weren't set as inputs and outputs. So we'll just fix that in the component and we'll update. So here we go. This is a real easy thing to fix. We just, uh, our data output pin, geez, I'm dumb. I set it to a an input. Here it is, electrical type. You can set all the different pins. Now, usually by default, they're like passive and then the warning wouldn't have, we wouldn't have got any warnings whatsoever. But you know, it, it, if you're doing this professionally, you're creating symbols professionally, you want to gonna want to set the um, output to a particular uh, type. So we can even set that to passive, and the warning will go away. But we'll set that to output because we're happy with. Uh, and there we go. It's changed the arrow pointing outwards, so it shows us that we've got the output like that. So D out, bingo, fixed. We can uh, save that, and then we can just go update schematic sheets. Boom. There's 11 components in one schematic document. Yep. Okay, we're updated, we're all good. We'll notice that our symbols have now changed. There we go, data out pin, pin 18 is now output. So if we run our out job again, we'll find, generate content, boom, our errors are gone for those particular chips. We've still got no driving source for the module, but I don't, you know, I could go in and fix that, but, and get down to zero errors. And if you're a professional uh, designer and a lot of companies will enforce this to go to the next step, the PCB step, you have to show that you've got zero errors on your ERC. And of course you can fudge that a lot of, you know, a lot of designers will rightly in some cases just fudge that until the errors go away and ha uh, so you know I, I know what I'm doing you know and so you can fudge it but yeah if you do it properly your goal is to get all the errors and warnings to go away before you go on to the PCB layout step but anyway that is now fixed I'm happy with that now of course we can use this ERC to find as I said a whole slew of it like I could go through maybe a hundred different examples of different variations of errors that uh, you know the system can find here but uh, like a very si let's do a very serious one for example let's say you uh, weren't thinking and you connected an output pin 18 D out here to another output oops you shorted two outputs together you could release the magic smoke so I've deliberately added that error in here and also another error here look on this chip u6 d out pin 18 i've actually shorted that down to ground so once again um yeah you could release the magic smoke you really want to pick an error like this up i've got another one d in here which is uh, floating and it's got uh, you can do online um checking as well like it shows it on the schematic that's what that red squiggle is that shows where the errors are so what we can do is we can just compile our project here and bingo look ground contains output pin and well it's power source so we can actually go there have a look at that and ta-da it's a bit hard to find 
the actual thing. It doesn't point out exactly where your error is. You've got to scroll around until, aha, there it is. Our output is shorted down to ground. So that's a real big deal that you want to get rid of. And uh, where's the other one? We've got uh, contains, has no, contains floating, and contains multiple output pins. Here we go. This is the one we want. We've got two outputs shorted together. And bingo, it's found that multiple output pins shorted together for us. So it, it just can pick up really gross errors like that. And so this is why ERCs are incredibly important, just as important, if not more so, than uh, PCB DRC errors. If you miss things in the schematic, they can flow through to the PCB, go through to the netlist, you route your board and you get it manufactured and multiple steps, could be multiple weeks or even months down the process before you build up your prototype and find that error when you should have actually captured it in your schematic. So ERC, electrical rules checking, very, very important thing. And uh, good quality package like um, Altium Designer will have extensive ERC capability. And as I said, there's just a ton of stuff in here with all these reports with the um, ones to do with buses. So if you've got buses, code symbols, uh, actual component stuff like subparts and being used and all sorts of, you know, you can set these to warning, no report error, fatal error, uh, whatever you want you might have company rules for these uh, sorts of things you know you might be forced to use a particular rule set uh, when you if you're a professional PCB designer at a company or something like that um, so your real serious companies will take this extremely serious because once bitten uh, twice shy and ERCs can really save your butt so well worth doing and documents and configurations harnesses and various nets and you can detect all sorts of weird and wonderful things with the connection matrix and we won't go into um, sort of other stuff but yeah it's a fantastically powerful tool now as you may have already gathered the quality of your ERC is really only as good as the quality of your component libraries in this case actually going there and setting all of these pins to inputs outputs or setting them to you know open collector and or bus power you know whatever it is and if you've got a really generic component library that doesn't have any of these things set then ERC is going to be of limited value if every single pin in here is set Set to uh, passive uh, for example then it's not going to do anything for you so it's going to miss a whole ton of stuff so yeah it pays to actually put effort into your component uh, libraries to ensure that all these things are set correct and of course nothing stops uh, you you know no ERC is going to save you if this pin 20 here you've accidentally labeled it pin 19 in your component library but that's why uh, companies put a lot of effort and often they'll have a dedicated uh, library design people or person who will just design libraries and once a library is designed that never gets touched again and it's once it's verified they will never touch that thing again so it, just be aware of that it's worth putting in the extra effort but yeah just be aware what your ERC is capable of and not capable of based on the information you're giving it garbage in garbage out a fantastically powerful tool ERC so have a play with it next time you do a schematic in your package of choice, of course, not all packages will be this uh, extensive and powerful, but your professional ones most certainly are, and they are for a reason. Hope you enjoyed that. Catch you next time.